Hello and welcome back to our series on using Photoshop on the iPad. We're looking at specifically delivering a non-destructive workflow. I'm going to be showing you how I retouch an image from start to finish, all in a non-destructive workflow. So this is it, Photoshop on the iPad. Very similar to the version on computer, but there are some fundamental differences that means that we're going to have to adapt some of the tools we use to make a non-destructive workflow work for us. Let's dive straight into the toolbar. That is the section on the left side. The first tool that we have is the move tool, which allows us to move selections and layers. Up next is the transform tool, which allows us to manipulate the perspective and the size of an image. Really easy to just click and drag with this tool. Next, we have our multiple selection tools. We have the lasso tool, the quick select, the rectangular marquee and the elliptical marquee. Now they all work exactly like you would expect. We also have a subject selection tool which allows us to draw a box around our subject and it will automatically try and select what it thinks the subject is. In the next part we're going to be using this tool to make a selection on the left side of the image to change out the background but we'll get to that when we've understood all the tools. Finally there's the lasso tool that allows you to drag and draw your selection just like you would in Photoshop on the PC. As you can see at the bottom of our screen now that we've clicked on the selection tool we have a few options that pop up. We can deselect, we can create a mask, we can even invert our selection. The next tool in the left side toolbar is the brush tool, which allows us to draw or paint, but it also allows us to paint inside of masks, which is really important for non-destructive workflows. As you can see by clicking on this brush tool, it pops up a few options. We've got our color swatches, we've got our size and our hardness, as well as our flow. If we click on the three little dots at the bottom, it will pop up our brush settings where we can change the blend mode, round this, the angle and the flow, as well as smoothing. And most importantly, we can change how our pen affects this tool. So if you're using the Apple Pencil, you can use the pressure for size. If we hold down the brush tool, it will pop up the different brushes we have. There's a lot of options just like in Photoshop on the computer. I'll let you explore that on your own. The next tool is the eraser tool. It does exactly what you'd expect. It allows you to remove portions of the photo that you're applying it to. Next, we have the fill tool, which also has the gradient tool. Two very useful things when working with masks. We're going to be using a lot of those later on. Next is the tool that I use the most as a retoucher who works a lot in fashion and portrait. We have the healing tool and the clone stamp tool. These are the two tools that I turn to for almost all my editing, apart from dodge and burn, which we'll get onto later on. As you can see by clicking on these, we get our different options from our brush size to our hardness. On the clone stamp tool, we can change the size by dragging the slider up and down. And our three little dots that will pop up the healing settings. On the clone stamp tool, we can change the size by dragging the slider up and down. We can change the hardness by doing the same. Finally, we have our selection tool, which allows us to select the zone that we want to copy from. And then we have our clone stamp settings. For non-destructive workflow, we want to make sure that we have our sample set to current and below, and that we are using pressure for size, just like with the other tool. Next, we have our crop tool, which we'll skip past because we've already done our crop in Lightroom, and our text tool for adding text. Next, there's the place photo tool, which allows you to drop photos in from your camera roll, from files, or directly from the camera on your device. Finally, there's the eyedropper tool, which allows you to select your foreground and background colour by sampling any layer. And then your colour swatch is right at the bottom there. A lot of you will be coming from Photoshop on the computer, where you're used to using your keyboard shortcuts to change the way these tools work. Chances are you're not using a keyboard at all. So how do we get around that? Adobe have come up with a simple solution. It's called the touch shortcut. It's this little dial that sort of floats on the screen. You can move it around how you want. And it allows you to do a left primary touch or a right secondary touch. When you click on the touch shortcut, it changes options on your tool. For example, on the clone stamp tool, it will allow you to select your source. Next is the thing that you'll be using the most, which is the taskbar. It's split into two sections. The top section contains our layer views, and the bottom section has all of our layer controls. At the top of the taskbar, we have our three different views. We have the compact layer view, the detail view, and the layer properties. The compact layer view is something that I haven't used at all and found a bit unnecessary as a retoucher, but I'm sure a lot of artists and visual designers will find it very useful. Next is the detail layer view, which shows you an expanded layer stack with masks, layer names, visibility and group. Finally, there's the layer properties, which you can see at the same time as seeing your detailed layer view. You can slide it up and down to change the height. It allows you to change things like the opacity and your blend mode. As you can see, we can change how many of these we see. We can see all three at the same time or just one. How do layers work in Photoshop on the iPad? They work exactly the same way as they do on the computer. We can create a new blank layer. We can even create adjustment layers. Now the choice in adjustment layers is limited. 
We have our brightness and contrast, black and white, colour balance, exposure, hue and saturation, levels and vibrance. It would have been great to have a curves adjustment layer, which is something I use all the time when I'm retouching. Hopefully Adobe will bring it in a future update. So as you can see, I can create a new group. I can change the group name really easily by double clicking. I can add a new blank layer and also change the name just by double clicking on the layer. You can also see that I can see the visibility of the layer. And the layer works exactly like you'd expect. It's a blank layer, we can go and draw directly onto it. We can use the brush tool, we can use a selection tool and fill it in. And now that we have some information on our layer, we can see the layer actions. A lot of these are things that you'd use keyboard shortcuts to do in normal Photoshop, but obviously without a keyboard, you do have to go through the additional clicks to access it. Things like locking your layer, deleting the layer, or even renaming the layer. There are shortcuts to a lot of these things. As I said, you can double click on a layer to rename it, but you also have the option there of clicking through. We also have the option to add a clipped adjustment layer directly onto our layer, as well as duplicate, copy, or select the layer. Right at the bottom, we also have our merging tools where we can merge down. We can create a clipped adjustment layer, for example, a color balance here. It will pop up and as you can see, the layer properties will change over to show us the options we have with our color balance adjustment layer. As you can see, it's really easy to just duplicate a layer by clicking duplicate layer. It will create an exact copy within the same group. For our non-destructive workflow, it's really important to be able to create masks. As you can see, we've got the option to create a mask on the right side there displays exactly the same as it does in Photoshop on the computer. Creating a mask without selection will create a blank mask, from which we can then use tools, for example the brush tool, to paint a mask onto it. This is key for non-destructive workflows as it allows us to revert backwards without ever impacting the information within the layer. Now here is the biggest limitation with Photoshop on the iPad. We only have two filters available to us. Luckily for us, these two filters are some of the most used filters for photo retouchers working with masks. We have a Gaussian blur filter that allows us to blur our layer or mask. And then we have an invert filter that allows us to invert the information on a mask or an image. By clicking on the three little dots at the bottom there, we also have mask actions that allow us to invert our mask or make a selection from our mask as well as flatten the mask and apply it to the image. Finally, we have debatably the two most useful tools on Photoshop, the undo and redo buttons, which are placed on the header bar right at the top there. In the next part, we're going to actually start our retouching process by creating our workflow, which means creating different groups and layers to allow us to work non-destructively.